When Pope John Paul went to worship at the feet of the image of the Black Madonna in 1987, the Times magazine of the following week reported a statement that said the image of the Black Madonna turned black because of a storm that had occurred some time ago. In a reaction to this, Dr. Yosef Ben Joshannon of Cornell University said, That might have been a hell of a storm indeed, to have also gone to Spain, Russia and Ethiopia to make all the images black, all at the same time. <laughs> The Roman Church began at about 334 CE, but the council that turned the Judeo-Christian ideology into a religion of the Roman Empire was called up in 325 CE by Emperor Constantine in Constantinople, a city now in Turkey. This made the head of the empire also the head of the Roman Church, which later became known as the Roman Catholic Church, and the empire became the Holy Roman Empire in the 6th century CE after the fall of the western part of the empire. The church later became headed by the Pope while political control belonged to the Emperor in Byzantium. For example, Emperor Justinian who was the Byzantium Emperor when a devastating plague almost destroyed the population of Europe. In the 15th century CE, artist Michelangelo painted a supposed picture of the crucified rabbi Yeshua or Yehoshua who later became known as Jesus. This was when the depictions of the rabbi became associated with Caucasoid features. Leonardo da Vinci also painted The Last Supper and it also depicted Caucasoid features. Long hair, blue-eyed and paler white skin. These two pictures then became the ideal depictions of the crucified Jewish rabbi, as far as the Roman Church was concerned. In the 15th century CE, when Europeans arrived West Africa, this was the concept of the saviour of all of mankind that was doused down to the Africans. Before this time, the Arabs had introduced the northern parts of Africa and the Sahel to Islamic ideology that was brought into Africa by the Arabs via the Trans-Saharan trade routes. The Arabs had also introduced slave trading through these routes in the 7th century CE. The Europeans who introduced the transatlantic, European slave trade in the 15th century CE had also brought in the Christian ideology, which, in effect, takes us to the very crux of this video. The La Morenetta, or as many would call it, the Black Madonnas. The La Morenetta, in medieval times, in the 5th century CE, when Christianity began to spread through Europa due to the influence of the Eastern Roman Empire, was that of a black negroid mother and child that depicted the biblical Virgin Mary and the child Yeshua, who grew to be known as a rabbi. 2nd century CE depictions of this Jewish rabbi also showed him to be of Africoid type features. The alterations began to come up in the 11th century CE, before Pope Urban delivered a sermon on a day in November of 1098 CE that reverberated around Europa and gave birth to the First Crusades. The term Black Madonna or Black Virgin tends to refer to statues or paintings in Western Christendom of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Infant Jesus, where both figures are depicted with dark skin. The most commonly accepted theory deems the image's skin color to be accidental. These Madonnas were once white, but have darkened through aging and exposure to candle soot. This explanation is as much anecdotal as it is a symptom of cultural whitewashing. It is hard to believe that all these images, represented in various materials, would have aged in a particular way that capriciously turned only their faces and hands black. The same phenomenon has not been observed in equal proportion in representations of Jesus Christ. Another explanation associates the Black Madonna with a biblical verse, saying that it refers to the words of the Bride in the Song of Solomon. I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. This theory at least accepts a clear intention behind the blackness of the images. Found in hundreds of Catholic churches across Europe and Latin America, the Black Madonna, a depiction of the Virgin Mary with dark skin, remains one of the most mysterious and controversial religious icons. She has a complex history and many possible meanings. Black Madonna images, dating mostly from the medieval period, appear in the form of paintings and sculptures carved out of wood and stone. The oldest examples, and the great majority of them, are found in European countries. According to some estimates, there are around 500 Black Madonnas in Europe alone, mostly Byzantine icons and statues in Catholic and Orthodox countries. They are often in the most venerated shrines dedicated to the Virgin Mary and have attracted thousands of pilgrims for centuries. The Black Madonna of Częstochowa and Montserrat. Among the most well-known of these images are Our Lady of Częstochowa in Poland and Our Lady of Montserrat in Catalonia. In these locations, 
their meaning and significance seem to go beyond religion. They are also powerful symbols of national identity. Most people are familiar with depictions of the Virgin Mary as fair-skinned, blue-eyed and blonde. A first encounter with a black Madonna is intriguing. Invariably, the first question crossing the minds of most of the visitors, no matter their country of origin or ethnic background, is, why is she black? This is where the controversy begins, with conflicting views between the church, academics and researchers. One of Poland's greatest contemporary composers, Henryk Gorecki, 1933-2010, once said, Her image, Our Lady of Częstochowa, juxtaposes several ideals of womanhood. A powerful heavenly queen, a suffering mother, a perfect nurturer. The scars are a sign of suffering she shares with her worshippers. Henryk Gorecki had not even considered to look into the sound illogicality of being able to move around as a living human being, but would worship something that could not. Without an independent mind, one would only follow and not question. Only a slave does not question. He follows customs only for the reason that they have been laid down by his forefathers. Jeroki attributed all the words of the living to an unliving, unloving, unknowing, unconscious image. Images only made meaning by the worship of the living. Unliving images cannot mean more than the worship of one alive. Gorecki's words were used as a metaphor for his relationship with the carved image, the Black Madonna of Częstochowa, aka Suffering Mother Country of Poland, that is represented through the painting of the Virgin Mary in the Shrine of Częstochowa. The Virgin Mary's suffering is the essence of the Polish soul, Polish culture, Polish Catholicism, Polish history, and of all Polish mothers. She has been the most powerful symbol of Polishness since the painting was brought to Częstochowa in 1382 when Poland was becoming nationhood. Through Poland's very turbulent history, the Russian partitions, World War II and post-war communism, the image called Our Lady of Częstochowa has always stood as the epitome of perfect motherhood, loving and forgiving, protector of her children who shared her grief in losing her son to a violent death on the cross. The story of the image of the Virgin Mary in Poland has its roots in legend. It is believed that the figure of Matka Boska Częstochowska was painted by Luke the Evangelist on a tabletop which was built by Jesus himself. It was discovered in the Holy Land by Saint Helen, the mother of Emperor Constantine and a collector of Christian relics. The piece was enshrined in Constantinople, where it remained for the next 500 years. The painting was then given as a wedding present from the Byzantine Emperor to a Greek princess marrying a Ruthenian nobleman in 803 before it eventually arrived in Poland in 1382. The Polish historian Jan Dlugosz wrote in his 15th century work Liber Beneficiorum that the work of art was brought to the Pauline Monastery at Częstochowa by Prince Władysław Jagiello from a castle at Bells, Russia. Prince Jagiello invited monks from Hungary into Poland to safeguard the holy picture. Four years later, in 1386, at the monastery of Jasnogora in the small town of Częstochowa, these monks established a shrine for the sacred painting. When the Hussites, the Czech forerunners of the Protestant Reformation, attacked Jasnogora in 1430, they damaged the work with arrows and by slashing the Virgin's face with a sword. The legend continues with the monks rescuing the painting from a bed of mud, where a miraculous fountain appeared, which they then used to carefully clean the painting. It was said to have been repainted in Krakow, but the arrow marks and the gash from the sword remained and are clearly visible to this day. The image called the Black Madonna of Częstochowa is also said to be famous for the miraculous liberation that occurred when Swedish troops were set to invade the city in 1655. With the Swedish army pressing around them, a group of Polish soldiers prayed desperately at the feet of their revered icon for deliverance from the approaching threat. Miraculously, despite their overwhelming strength, the invading army retreated. In 1656, a year after the failed invasion, King Casimierz of Poland declared the image to be Queen of Poland and made the city the spiritual capital of the nation. Thus, she became a symbol of protection and created a specific national identity that impacted on the entire population of Poland. In 1717, Pope Clement XI officially recognized the miraculous nature of the image. It was said that the Virgin had helped Poland again in 1920, 
when the Soviet Red Army massed for an attack on Warsaw at the banks of the Wiesla River. In this case, the entire nation, it was said, had prayed to the black-colored image also known as Our Lady of Częstochowa. On September 15th, on the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows, the Virgin is said to have appeared in the clouds above Warsaw. The Russians were soon defeated in a series of relentless battles that later became referred to as the Miracle at the Wiesla River. In 1925, Pope Pius XI designated May 3rd a feast day in honor of the image, the Black Madonna of Częstochowa. During the Nazi occupation of Poland 1939 to 1945, Hitler prohibited pilgrimages to Jasna Gora, but many Poles continued to make the journey in secret. On September 8, 1946, a year after the liberation of Poland, huge crowds of people gathered at Częstochowa and expressed gratitude to the image. Because of its strongly held devotions and the high number of followers during the communist era in Poland, Jasna Gora, the home of the Black Madonna, became known as the center of anti-government resistance. These historical events strengthened the belief of the Polish nation in the image's miraculous qualities and inherent power. The popular image of the Queen of Poland can be found in many Polish homes, where people pray for help in both personal and national safekeeping. John Paul II visited the monastery a few days before he became Pope in 1979. He said, The Poles are accustomed to link with this place, this shrine, the many happenings of their lives, the various joyful or sad moments, especially the solemn, decisive moments, the occasions of responsibility, such as the choice of the direction for one's life, the choice of one's vocation, the birth of one's children, final school examinations, and so many other occasions. They are accustomed to come with their problems to Jasnagora, to speak of them with their Heavenly Mother. The image was apparently rendered with original dark flesh tones, there being no evidence that the black coloration resulted, as some have claimed, later from smoke, fires, or the discoloration of age. It is probably of 14th century manufacture, consistent with the lack of provenance before 1384, when the icon appeared at the Jasnagora Monastery. The devotion to the image called Black Madonna of Częstochowa, also known as Our Lady of Częstochowa, is an essential element of Polish culture and nationality, and it has been transmitted in the Polish blood for many generations. Montserrat first came to life in 1025, when a new monastery was founded at the Hermitage of Santa Maria de Montserrat. The monastery quickly became popular as stories of miracles performed by the Virgin spread from pilgrim to pilgrim. In 1409, the monastery became an independent abbey and then a cultural center of the First Order. Montserrat is considered one of the special power spots of the world. Electromagnetic fields are said to be strong here and healing powers are attributed to the small dark statue if one touches her or the orb she holds in one hand. So who is the Black Madonna? And how did she come to be enshrined in this mountaintop retreat cut from reluctant rocks so far from significant population centers? This wooden statue is known by many names, such as the Virgin of Montserrat, La Moreneta, St. Mary of Montserrat, and the Black Virgin. Fun fact, the entirety of Montserrat was built around the potential to worship the Black Madonna, located within the Basilica. Some legends claim that the statue of the Black Madonna of Montserrat, aka Our Lady of Montserrat, originated in Jerusalem in the days of the early church. It's believed to have been carved at the beginning of the religion by Saint Luke himself, while he lived in Jerusalem. It is one of the most famous Black Madonna statues in the world, and in 1844, Pope Leo XIII had declared the Virgin of Montserrat the patroness of Catalonia. Through unexplained events, the statue, it was said, was moved from Jerusalem to Egypt, almost mirroring the escape of the Holy Family to safety as they fled persecution from King Herod's troops. In 718 AD, to escape destruction by the Moorish invaders, the statue was taken to Barcelona, where it fell from sight until 880 AD. On that fateful date, shepherds, watching their flocks at night, saw lights and heard singing on a mountainside in Catalonia on successive Saturday nights and on investigation found the statue enthroned on a ledge in a cavern. Attempts to take the statue in procession to the cathedral failed, since as they proceeded, the statue became heavier and heavier. This was interpreted as a sign that they should leave it at a nearby abbey. During the 9th century, the abbey was expanded to four chapels, 
and during the 11th century, a monastery was founded on the mountains of Montserrat close to the abbey. Talk of mysterious happenings on the mountain went from town to town, pilgrimages followed, as did prayers and requests for favors, and it is said, miracles occurred. Word of reported healing spread across Spain. In 1592, the original shrine was expanded into a basilica and consecrated to the image called Our Lady of Montserrat. A strong tradition of pilgrimages developed around Our Lady of Montserrat and the shrine built to receive the statue. The statue is affectionately called La Moreneta, or the Little Madonna, and is 37 inches high. The statue shows the baby is seated on his mother's lap, blessing with his right hand, holding a small fur cone in the left. The image holds an orb in her right hand, her left hand protectively hovering around the shoulder of the holy baby. In 1881, Pope Leo III crowned it Our Lady of Montserrat. In 1947, the Black Madonna was celebrated in the enthronement of the image of the Mother of God, and the monastery has been gaining in popularity ever since. The paintings are usually icons which are Byzantine in origin or style, some of which were produced in 13th or 14th century Italy. Other examples from the Middle East, Caucasus or Africa, mainly Egypt and Ethiopia, are even older. Statues are often made of wood but are occasionally made of stone, painted, and up to 75 centimeters 30 inches tall. They fall into two main groups, freestanding upright figures or seated figures on a throne. About 400 to 500 black Madonnas have been recorded in Europe, with the number related to how they are classified. There are at least 180 Vierge Noires in southern France alone. There are hundreds of copies made since the medieval era. Some are displayed in museums, but most are in churches or shrines and are venerated by believers. Some are associated with miracles and attract substantial numbers of pilgrims. Black Madonnas come in different forms. Speculations behind the basis of the dark hue of each individual icon or statue vary greatly, and some have been controversial. Explanations range from Madonnas made from dark wood, or Madonnas that have turned darker over time, due to factors such as aging or candle smoke, to a study by Jungian scholar Ian Begg, into the potential pagan origins of the cult of the Black Madonna and Child. Another suggestion is that dark-skinned representations of pre-Christian deities were re-envisioned as the Madonna and Child. People also believe that, in addition to her mystical and agricultural connotations, the Black Madonna also speaks to an ancient cultural memory of the African origins of humanity, representing the original mother of Earth's children. There are Black Madonnas and Black Madonnas. The former applies generically to any dark skin coloured representation of Mary. Falling into this category are recent depictions of Our Lady like Larry Scully's Madonna and Child of Soweto. The term used frequently to designate these images is enculturated Madonnas, meaning artwork by African or African-American artists, sometimes also by artists of a different racial background for people of the same or similar cultures. These representations may convey a critical message in as much as they highlight the universal and thus transracial significance of the Christ event, including Mary. Most of these images are of recent origin, others came to prominence only recently. In the latter case, we are dealing with sometimes century-old artwork of Africa, whose artistic and spiritual values have been ignored for a long time. That, however, this is not the topic of the following feature. The meaning of Black Madonna used here refers to a type of Marian statue or painting of mainly medieval origin, at least 12c to 15c, of dark or black features whose exact origins are not always easy to determine, and most important, of particular prominence. The latter, the prominence of the Black Madonna, is mostly due to the allegedly miraculous character of the image. Among the miraculous Marian images are the so-called Black Madonnas. Many of these images are quite popular among the faithful. Of the hundreds which presently exist at various shrines, some of the better-known images are Our Lady of Altötting in Bavaria, Germany, Our Lady of the Hermits in Einsiedeln, Switzerland, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mexico City, Our Lady of Jasna Gora, Czestochowa, Poland, Our Lady of Montserrat, Spain, and Our Lady of Tindari, Sicily. In the early days of the comparative religion's discipline, authors casually equated the black virgins venerated by Catholics with pagan goddess images of similar appearance, providing some with a polemic argument against the Catholic Church. More recently, some feminist writers have suggested the Black Madonna as indicating a perspective on Mary underemphasized in traditional Christian doctrine. In any case, 
Black Madonnas have proved themselves as devotional aids within ecclesial life over the course of centuries. Many of these images have received approval from ecclesiastical authority in light of the divine, approval manifested by well-attested miracles, subsequently approved by church leadership. History of the Black Madonna Genre Important early studies of dark images in France were done by Marie Durand Lefebvre, 1937, Emile Sayance, 1945, and Jacques Winen, 1972. The first notable study of the origin and meaning of the so-called Black Madonnas in English appears to have been presented by Leonard Moss at a meeting of the American Association for the Advancement of Science on December 28, 1952. Amazingly, all the images in Moss's study had a reputation for miracles. Based on a study of nearly 100 samples from various parts of the world, Moss broke the images into three categories. One, dark brown or black Madonnas with physiognomy and skin pigmentation matching that of the indigenous population. Two, various art forms that have turned black as a result of certain physical factors such as deterioration of lead-based pigments, accumulated smoke from the use of votive candles, and accumulation of grime over the ages. Three, residual category with no ready explanation. That a certain percentage of black images falls into the first group seems self-evident. For example, many African images of Mary depict her racially as a black woman. This particular racial depiction is also apparent in many of the ethnic creches in the Marian Library collection. Also, the famous image of Our Lady of Guadalupe from Mexico, although not necessarily intended to depict Mary's race as black, was included in this class by Moss. The second explanation is frequently cited by Catholic non-experts in relation to particular images. Though overused, it certainly applies to a certain percentage of black Madonnas. The famous statue of Our Lady of the Hermits in Einsiedeln, Switzerland, illustrates this phenomenon. After evacuation to Austria in 1798 to escape the designs of Napoleon, when the Madonna was returned in 1803, she was found to have been cleaned during her stay in Blue Dents. It was promptly decided that she should be restored to her wonted blackness before being exposed once more to the gaze of the faithful. Similarly, the statue of Our Lady of Altutting was rescued from the ravaging of the church by flame in the year 907. This might account for the darkened features, though Moss has his doubts. If not the image at Altutting, other black Madonnas were certainly altered in appearance after miraculous rescues from burning churches. After accounting for images which fall into the first two categories, we are left with a number of black Madonnas still requiring explanation. As Moss notes, it is difficult to rule out artistic license. In the absence of texts stating the artist's intent, only speculation is possible. However, assuming that some of the images were darkened intentionally, we may attempt some explanations. There seem to be two particularly strong theories. The first is that the images were darkened to illustrate a text from the Song of Songs, I am black but beautiful. In support of this theory, note that many of the black Madonnas exist in France and date from around the time of the Crusades, when Bernard of Clairvaux wrote numerous commentaries on the canticles, comparing the soul to the bride, as well as many on Our Lady. He was also known to have visited several shrines of the black Madonna, for example, Châtillon and Affligem. In the Gothic period, texts explicitly interpreted the bride in Canticles as referring especially to Mary. Once artistic precedent had been set, subsequent black Madonnas may be explained by artistic convention rather than theological motivation. Based on historical correlations, Ian Begg speculates that the genre developed from an esoteric popular religion common among the Templars and Cathars, perhaps as a complement to the impetus from Bernard. The other prominent theory is briefly summarized by Stephen Benko, the Black Madonna is the ancient earth goddess converted to Christianity. His argument begins by noting that many goddesses were pictured as black, among them Artemis of Ephesus, Isis, Ceres, and others. Ceres, the Roman goddess of agricultural fertility, is particularly important. Her Greek equivalent, Demeter, derives from Gemeter, or Earth Mother. The best fertile soil is black in color, and the blacker it is, the more suited it is for agriculture. Were these images taken as is, renamed, baptized as it were, and reused in Christian worship? If so, the practice seems compatible in spirit with the norms on enculturation given by Pope St. Gregory the Great in a letter to priests written in 601. It is said that the men of this nation are accustomed to sacrificing oxen, 
it is necessary that this custom be converted into a Christian rite. On the day of the dedication of the pagan temples thus changed into churches, and similarly for the festivals of the saints, whose relics will be placed there, you should allow them, as in the past, to build structures of foliage around these same churches. They shall bring to the churches their animals and kill them, no longer as offerings to the devil, but for Christian banquets in name and honor of God, to whom after satiating themselves, they will give thanks. Only thus, by preserving for men some of the worldly joys, will you lead them thus more easily to relish the joys of the Spirit. We may even wonder whether pagan statues of mother and child were thought to represent someone other than the Virgin Mary and her son, Jesus. For Roman Catholics, Mary is the woman. Similarly, the only child worthy of special note is the Christ child. Lacking explicit identification, it seems natural that Christians read these perspectives into any art they saw. In fact, it seems that Eusebius of Caesarea took advantage of this predisposition and, sublimating any pagan roots, which he considered likely, used an image of the Black Madonna as preparatio evangelii, or evangelical preparation, a readily accepted introduction to the full Christian mystery, which is indeed centered on the words incarnation through Mary. Far from condemning the phenomenon, Benko, a non-Catholic, goes even further in validating this example of enculturation. He begins by noting the Judeo-Christian roots of the Earth Mother concept in Adam's creation in Genesis 2.7. Benko sees a parallel to the new creation in which Christ is the new Adam. Structurally, Mary parallels the Earth of the first creation. Benko also cites one Ambrose as an explicit example. From the Virgin Earth, Adam, Christ from the Virgin. Moss mentions a similar teaching from Ambrose's pupil. Saint Augustine noted that the Virgin Mary represents the earth and that Jesus is of the earth born. Benko continues, Earth is not only the source of fertility and new life, it is also an agent of death. Everything comes from earth and returns to it. This is ultimately what lies behind the saying of Paul, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. Along similar lines, Benko mentions Genesis 3.19 as closely related to the creation account of Genesis 2.7. The agricultural cycle images death and new life, themes closely connected to the paschal mystery of Jesus. Indeed, some early Christian writers used pagan myths of life reborn from death, like the phoenix rising from its ashes, as preambles to the announcement of Jesus' story. That brings us to the end of yet another video segment. Did you happen to learn a thing or two from this video? Then do not hesitate, reach out to us in the comments section below and share your thoughts with us. Also, support our works by hitting that like button in front of you, share with family and friends to keep spreading our eye-opening black narrative and subscribe to stay in tune. We are glad to have you with us. Thank you for watching.